Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So I lied. <laughs> I apologize. Um, this isn't going to be a true crime video. <laughs> um, I just realized I'm not in a really good, um, I guess mental place to do a true crime video. So I thought I'd come on here and just talk about a few things. So this is going to be journal entry. I think five or six <laughs> um I don't know just a lot of things kind of came to head today um just mentally I mean I guess I'm just trying to figure out um a lot of personal stuff um and It's, uh, I don't know. I'm feeling angry. I guess kind of, that's kind of like the stages. Um, so this is going to be like a kind of a story time slash kind of just processing everything um, that I'm going to say, I guess, <laughs> or going through. Um, yeah. Um, I kind of got lost in my head there for a little bit this evening, um, so I thought I'd come on here and document it because, hey, why not? Why not be true and genuine and just speak the truth? Um, you know, I was kind of lost in my head, like I said. And it kind of just brought me back to kind of what my abusers used to say, that I wasn't going to be good enough for anybody. That, um, you know, nobody could ever love me. And after this past two weeks, almost, um, you know, I kind of felt myself sinking into that. Um, sorry, you guys are tipping a little bit. Uh, kind of demeanor of thinking that. Um, I know I'm kind of being vague, um, but I don't want to speak for other people. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of just speak. <laughs> um, the situation that went down and, you know, one day I'll talk about it depending on, you know, the outcome of the situation. Regardless, um, I remember just sitting, um, through the situation that I went through about two weeks ago and kind of just being like, hey, they were right. They were right. You know, nobody could ever love you for who you are. Um, and you know, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to get emotional, um, so I'm going to do my best not to, <laughs> um, but it sucked. I'm not going to lie. And I've been pondering this for the two past two weeks, just like, hey, um, they really damaged you enough that nobody could possibly love you. That no matter how hard you try, you're just damaged goods. And, um, you're just not going to be enough for anybody. You're not. You're not lovable. And maybe in some ways I'm not, you know, I know that I can be cut off. I kind of guarded with myself and, um, I 
it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Um, it's just coming to that real realization that, you know, the one person you thought could love you no matter what, just, you're not good enough for them. <laughs> and it, it pissed me off. I put a lot of pressure on myself this past two weeks, like being like, you know, why aren't you good enough? You know, why aren't you enough for somebody? And it just, it frustrated me. It angered me. And it, like you guys saw from my last video, um, you know, I beat myself up about it. I beated myself about it. Uh, about, I can't even speak English. Jesus Christ, just get your shit together. Um, I beat myself up about it, I still am, um, and then I kind of realized, you know, I have been through a lot, um, you know, everybody's situation is different, um, but I have physically, mentally, sexually, whatever it is, been through a lot. And I know that it took me a few years to process it, um, through the drinking, the makeup, the weight gaining, the loss of weight, back up to gaining weight, to just everything fucking came to head. <laughs> and I'm not gonna deny it. Um, you know, through pers pushing myself through hours and hours of working out and starving myself and just trying to be this person for everybody, you know, going to college and, you know, I had to give up my scholarship and I've done a video about that. And so I pushed on through and went through, uh, to get another degree and I did that and just trying so fucking hard <laughs> in life and it. at me now <laughs> type of thing um and I just have been just feeling angry <laughs> um and then you know I am still in <laughs> as you can tell um but I'm kind of just learning to take a step back and breathe a little bit um and being like, you know what, I have accomplished a lot in my life and um, I have overcome a lot and I'm still probably going to face a lot. Look, I'm only 28, like <laughs> the world is still out there. Um, I'm sure I'm going to go through a lot more in over the years. Um, it's just, it's hard. <laughs> being an adult is hard. Um, you know, it's not what it's made up to be when you're a kid, you know? Um, there's so much shit going on in the world that it's just mind-blowing, you know? Um, that you kind of think that what you're going through is kind of petty compared to what's going on out there. Um, and I shoved it down. I'm not gonna lie, I had been shoving my shit down because I'm like, hey, stop being so petty. <laughs> um, but the truth is, I can be petty and selfish for a moment, um, and feel what I'm feeling. And the truth is, I don't know what I'm feeling, because all right now, I just feel angry. Um, and I, I just don't know, you know, I have been throwing myself into work and family stuff and not allowing myself to fully feel what took place two weeks ago. Um, and that's not fair to me. <laughs> I know that. Um, cause like I said, I've been falling into bad habits, old habits. Um, and I'm learning that I can feel what I'm feeling. 
Um, I've actually fallen into watching my comfort show, which is Flashpoint, which, for those who don't know, it is was a Canadian show that um, followed basically our kind of specialized unit of police force that is trained in psychology and, um, of course, regular uh, police action. Um, you know, they're trained in mental health. Uh, they're not a very, like, broad um, kind of special police force. Um, in the show, it's called SRU. Um, I think it is called ET. E or ETF, I think it's called. I have to look that up. I can't remember. And that kind of <laughs> dropped me into a rabbit hole. I'm not going to lie. So this is what leads into the story time. Um, I've talked about this multiple times. Uh, so the show ran from, I do believe, 2007 to 2000. Beginning of 2007. No, sorry. End of 2007, beginning of 2008, I do believe, to 2012. Um, it was five seasons. Uh, so do the math on there. I think I'm right? I don't know. I don't know. Fuck, fuck math. Anyways. Um, and that kind of just dropped me down the rabbit hole of what I went through with my abusers. Which kind of snowballed into everything that I'm feeling now. So let's break it down. Um... And there's a lot of things that I haven't really talked about the situation. Um, I kind of just grazed over it a little bit. Um, and not really processed my feelings for that. Um, because I didn't think that it was dignified or right or whatever the hell it was. Um, so anyways, in high school, at the peak of, you know, my abuse and stuff and me reaching out to my school and asking for help. Um, they got tired of it basically and called the police and two officers, um, spoke to me. So I was pulled out of my English class and I was asked to come to the office, which was like, okay. Um, and I wrote about this in my book too. So also I kind of, I didn't graze over it, but I didn't go into the full detail of it. So, basically what was the tip of the iceberg for the police to be brought in, um, I was, um, cornered in the hallway of my high school by three of my abusers, and at the time my ex, who was kind of like the kingpin of the thing, was dating this other girl, and the other girl was trying to, like, kiss ass with me basically trying to like get all the dirty details on me and you know I, I I warned her I was just like you know it is your decision do whatever you want um but just be careful because I don't want you to get hurt well that got back to my ex and he got pissed and of course you know the three of them cornered me in a hallway and told me to stop talking shit that I should kill myself that I was worthless trash, um, that nobody could have possibly loved me, um, that, you know, I was nothing without them, that if I kept on this behavior, that I would be sorry. Um, so I took that as a threat, took that to the office. Of course, this was like the thousandth time that I reported this and they got pissed, of course. Um, and of course they didn't see any video evidence of this when, of course, my high school was loaded with video cameras. Um, I was the bad person, you know, God forbid I reach out for help, you know, that type of thing. Um, and so I was pulled out of my English class one day. Um, my counselor, the vice pres uh, president, principal, um, and VP was there, for, so vice president, principal. I think I said VP twice. I'm sorry. Uh, counselor, um, principal, and VP were there, and two officers, one male, one female. 
and I remember this so vaguely, I thought something happened to either my brother, my dad, or my mom. Um, cause like, why would a counselor be there and, you know, the principal and VP and two police officers? Um, I was notified that, you know, nothing was wrong with the family, that this was about me. And for a split second, I thought that the, you know, police officers were there to help me. <laughs> they weren't. Um, it was made perfectly clear to me that, um, you know, they were notified of the situation from my counselor, principal, and VP of me reporting falsely that I was being abused or bullying was taking place or whatever you, they wanted to call it. And I basically didn't even get to share my side of the story to this. Um, the two officers. So it wasn't even a female officer um, talking to me. So usually um, in a domestic situation or even like not a domestic situation, something that took place violently, whatever, a crime, it is usually um, like a male officer will talk to a male officer or a female officer will talk to a female officer. You know, take them aside and talk with them and get their side of the story separate like individual like away from everybody no 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 that did not take place it was my counselor principal vp male officer and female officer all in one fucking room and we were in the principal's office at the time okay um so that was one two three four five people against me nothing i'm not used to because hey six against one you know, kind of used to it. Um, so this wasn't like, I didn't even really get to say anything. Like I said, um, the evidence was stated that I've been reporting falsely, falsely that this was happening. Um, I didn't put this in my book. Um, and basically they were taking forth that, you know, I was just a teenager, a mo an emotional teenager that was having difficulty dealing with my ex moving on um and I remember kind of just like sitting there being like mm, okay there's visit vis video evidence and I know for a fact there was visit vis video evidence good god I can't even speak tonight fuck sorry guys um of the abuse taking place I know for a fact there are hundreds of video cameras throughout the school. I know for a fact that at least some video was taking place of this. Out of whatever fucking hallway it was. At any given time. That there was, excuse me, some type of evidence. Of course not. That wasn't, that wasn't talked about. No, 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 no. Um, it was just an emotional teenager being an emotional bitch. Um, and I, I try to bring that up like, hey, I know that those video evidence, like this isn't just me being, you know, stupid. And the officers basically said, there is no video evidence. There's no evidence of any situation taking place. And that I need to falsely, stop falsely accusing these guys of any wrongdoing. I need to stop. And I remember saying, like, really? Are you kidding me? Like, hold on. <laughs> Is this a prank? And all five of them looked at me and were like, no, you need to stop. Like, stop being childish. Um, and, you know, from there I went to the bathroom, I threw up, and I remember sitting in the stall, and I'm like, wait, hold on a second, this is, this is not how officers of the law are supposed to behave. Um, so through my time in high school, this, the show Flashpoint was on, and I was like, this, this, 
this can't be like this this show is based on officers of the like GTA like it might have not been like true stories but the characters and like law enforcement was based off of a real law enforcement and I was just like this 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 can't be this 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 can't be it like this I don't know somebody's gonna pop out of the wall and be like hey I gotcha um that didn't happen and I was just like this this can't be like this 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 can't be like no officer took me aside to talk to me no female officer took me aside and be like hey like, you can be honest with me type of thing. It was just me, bas them basically telling me to shut the hell up. And just go on with my life. Just stop with the bullshit. And it was just like, really? Really? This, this is what law enforcement is. Um... And I don't know, I don't know why that has been weighing on me this past two weeks. I don't know why. Out of all of it, that's been weighing on me the most. Probably because I've been watching Flashpoint because it's my comfort show. Um, because it's officers of the law actually reaching out to individuals that are struggling. Um, and they're willing to help and listen. Um, and no matter what you're going through, they were willing to listen and help and try to help um and I don't know it's just I don't know it's been weighing on me this past two weeks and I don't know why but here we are um and I don't know I've for the past two weeks I've been really diving hard into the show like I have been watched the five seasons um cry through some episodes because hey <laughs> I'm emotional right now and, I don't know, something that struck me, uh, I guess just relating to the past two weeks, is these individuals, I mean, and you see their personal lives throughout this show, also, you know, you see their struggles and all that stuff, um, I don't know, it's just like, I don't, I don't even know how to process it, or how, like, I'm feeling right now, it's just like, How does somebody go from having your back? Okay, I guess this is, I'm kind of like relating it to it. Having your back, supporting you, loving you, no matter what. Uh, building you up, you know, growing with you, you know, wanting to, or wanting you to succeed together type of thing. To just, no contact. You know, barely talking to just destroying one one's life, you know, with a few sentences. And me fighting so hard, so hard to, for this individual. Um, I don't know, it just kind of just brought me back to that point of just being so beaten down that nobody was listening, you know. Nobody was willing to help me. And I guess it just kind of like trampled on to just being, I don't know, just feeling a whole bunch of stuff. My throat is dry as shit. I apologize. Oh, sorry for the light being dim too. I, whatever. Um, here we are. I don't know. I don't know why all of that has trampled into one fucking emotion of me being here, present and accounted for. Um, I don't know. It's just, I guess, feeling alone again. Um, it's scary, honestly. And not knowing how to process everything, I guess, related to that, of, you know, that girl 
basically 10 years ago. Good Lord. Here we are. Actually, no, it's been more than 10 years. It's been 15-ish. Yeah, 15. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess it just had me reclusing into that girl that I was 15 years ago. Um, of being like, hey, <laughs> my abusers were right. Look at that. Shocker. Woo. Um, pity party type of thing of like, hey, nobody could possibly love you. Nobody could possibly want to be with you. Um, you know, you're the fuck up. You know, you've always just been this fuck up person, I guess. Um, and here I was <laughs> thinking I was doing so well, you know, um, having a good career, uh, releasing a book, um, standing on my own two feet, you know, rebuilding my relationship with my family, um, slowly becoming this strong, independent woman that I am, but also opening myself up and it not being good enough. Um, blows. <laughs> there is no simple word. There is no... It just blows, you know, and I'm angry and I'm feeling a, a million emotions and it's just like trying to process that without ruining, um, all that I have built and all that I have overcome and I don't want to recluse into that girl that I once was, um, a feeling alone and isolated and, you know, possibly nobody ever loving me. And, you know, I, a part of me wants to say, yeah, <laughs> they're right. And then another per part of me wants to say, that's fucking bullshit. You're queen. You know, let's go. Let's go, bitch. <laughs> let's let, like, let's go, you know, dust yourself off and keep going. And it's just like, it's a hard fight. It's a hard fight because a part of me just doesn't want to feel anything. A part of me just wants to, like, you know, crawl into bed and just stay there and listen to all those voices and, you know, agree to, um, that, you know, and it didn't, it didn't really, really help that one of my abusers reached out to me this past week. I'm not going to lie. Um them kind of walking in and being like, oh, I was thinking about you, you know, I miss you and I hope all is well. And a part of me was like, you know what, they're right, you know, let's, let's contact them. But I didn't, I didn't. I was like, you are a strong girl. You don't need them. You know, they were wrong. <laughs> you know, there was somebody out there that can love you. Um, and even if, you know, whatever this situation may outcome these past two weeks, um, not gonna lie, I don't know the outcome right now because I don't even know how to process my own feelings. Um, you know, here I am. Um, I'm still here. I did not give in to them. I did not contact them. Um, I blocked their number. I took a deep breath. Oh my god, I'm breaking out into a rash. That's sexy. Um, as you can tell, breaking out into a rash here and on my arm. That's sexy. <laughs> That's attractive. Um, oh god, my arms are big. Actually, you know what? Yeah, they're big with muscle. Fuck that. Um, just like stra stress rash, man. Just like fucking yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I don't even know what, I lost my train of thought. So many fucking emotions, guys. Um, but yeah, there we go. I found my train of thought. I did not give in to them. Um, I'm allowing myself to feel what I feel. Sorry, my throat is like, That light is actually pretty good. Hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So basically what I've learned through these past two weeks is don't, don't shut your emotions off. Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Um, and no matter what it is, happy, sad, angry, you know, excited. And, um... I am processing that. I am finding out, you know, that it's okay to be angry right now. Um, it's all okay to, you know, want more from your career. It is okay to go forth into that career, um, to push yourself. It is okay to love yourself. Um, it is okay to say you are enough. And if anybody can't see that, then screw them. <laughs> you know, somebody out there will see who you truly are. Somebody will love you for your independence, your strength, your work ethic, your corny jokes, <laughs> your you know, want to hang out and just chill in bed or go out and explore the world, um, you know, and it's okay to feel angry as well. It is okay to feel sad. It is okay to feel like you want to cry to just break down and just feel those emotions, you know, it is okay to just take a breath, step back from everything that you're feeling, take a deep breath. And then process everything. It's a strong feeling that you're feeling and that is okay. If you're not feeling anything at all, that is okay also. Um, that was me for the first week. I was just not feeling anything, not wanting to feel anything. And that's okay. You don't have to force yourself to be anybody that you're not. You don't have to force yourself to feel something that you are not ready to feel. Um... And just kind of what I'm realizing is just balancing that, you know, balancing your past, your present and your future and not knowing exactly where your future is going to go. That is okay to feel stuff from your pre past. That is okay too. And to come full head with what you're feeling in the present that is 100% okay and justified and you're allowed to. Um, like I said, I wasn't ready to do a true crime video, even though it is sitting there waiting presently for me to come on here and do a video. I was not mentally, emotionally, and physically prepared for that, um, even though a part of me was. I was not comfortable of doing it and that is okay do not force yourself something that you are not ready to do um and that would that's what I found that I did in the past few years I forced myself to do something that I wasn't ready to do um but I did it anyways and then here we are you know um me kind of beating myself up and then realizing it's not my fault um that I just need to process everything, I need to feel everything, and then take a breath and be okay with that, you know. Um, you know, I might be angry at myself, I might be angry at, you know, individuals or the world or whatever, and that's okay. You know, I am comfortable in my skin and I shouldn't feel that I shouldn't be, you know, like I shouldn't be made to feel like that's not right, that that's, you know, wrong. And that's what I'm processing and able to feel. And I'm sorry if you guys are hearing banging in the background, it's my neighbors. I don't know. It's like nine o'clock at night and somebody's banging out there because they decided to do their deck or whatever. Um, so I know. Um, but yeah, that is what I'm learning these past two weeks, guys. Um, it is an emotional roller coaster that I'm processing 
you know, and able to feel. And this video has been a lot, and I apologize. Um, but here we are. I wanted to be honest with you guys, and that is what I'm doing. I have always, you know, stated in this channel that I want to be honest with you and raw with you guys and just be open. And I find that that's actually helping and processing with a lot of people. And I'm glad that I can share my journey with you guys because it is one hell of a journey. Um, for those wondering, it's ginger ale. Man, I have been dealing with heartburn up the ass. I don't know if it's because of the stress, but the bubbles are helping. Like, I'm not even joking. I need to stop stressing because that is probably the heartburn talking. Um, but that's fine. You know what I mean? Um, but guys, um, I really, I honestly really want to get out a true crime video. I just want to be in the right state of mind for you all, um, to be able to share this story that I'm really, really excited to share. And I don't want to keep dragging this out, but I just want to be in the right state of mind for you guys. Um, and this exact moment it is not, but it is in the queue and I promise you guys it is coming. I just need to do process all these emotions um kind of just deal with my past a little bit deal with my present take a breath heal a little bit and then we'll be good to go um so hopefully in the next video or two i'll be able to do a true crime video it's just you know i need to be in the right state of mind um which i'm hoping this heartburn will go away <laughs> My state of mind will be emotionally sound and we'll be good to go. Anyways, guys, I'm mambling. I should a lot. I'm apologizing. Uh, but remember, guys, never give up. Always keep fighting you enough. And you're very much loved. Until the next video, guys, stay safe. And I apologize for not being able to speak English this video. Like, I have so many things processing in my mind that it just dribbles out into, like, <laughs> nonsense. But anyways, guys, thank you for being on this journey, and I thank you for all the positive uh, comments in the last video. And I know last video, I don't know, it was struggling to upload, and some people were seeing it, some people weren't. So I hope you guys are seeing this. Anyways, guys, it is a 40-minute video almost. I apologize. Anyways, guys, have a good evening. Have a good day. Have a good afternoon. Whatever time you are watching this, remember, I have your back always. Um, yeah, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.